name's Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We have a rather obese patient up on the operating table this morning. And this patient just happens to be missing a body part. Whew. We got our work cut out for us on this one. <laughs> Can you see what the problem is? <laughs> Fortunately, the part is here. But unfortunately, I can't just glue it right in there. There's a big crack right here on this F-hole that goes all the way down. So, I would say we had a little trauma somewhere along the line here. This came with uh, to me with the full string tension on it. Let me just say to you, if you have experienced an issue like this with a broken top on any instrument, bass or otherwise, be sure to take your string pressure off. Because all you're doing is creating additional problems or potential problems, let's say it that way. So anyway, I've got the string tension way, way, way down now. I mean, there's probably still just a minor amount of tension there, but it's very minimal. So, I'm going to look into uh, figuring out how to fix this. I'm looking at what is glued here, and it does not look like hide glue. It honestly looks like wood filler. All the way across here is what it looks like. It's chalky like, or it, it appears to be rough, chalky surface. You can see it on here probably better. It's a uh, very chalky looking all the way around and I am sure that that's not high glue now this would be what high glue would look like something like this this darker this color here so I don't know it looks to me like somebody's just been maybe these sides were loose and somebody just forced body or uh, some kind of a putty in there trying to seal the crack there are cleats like this everywhere inside this. I, I would, I'm counting right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen cleats just in this area alone. There's at least that many on the other side in the same area. And I see cleats up in there through the body. What model of base is this and how old is it? I'm not sure. Let's see if I can figure it out. Looking down through the F hole here, I see a label, dingy gray. I'm gonna see if, I, it's probably dust. I'm gonna take this brush and lightly brush it off where I can read it. I can't make out the first word. It almost looks like Coit and Geiger's. Something like that, or Toit. It's either Toit or Coit and Geiger. And it's either, so it's spelled either K-O-I-T or T-O-I-T, and I can't tell for sure. And Geiger is G-E-I-G-E-R. Violin, I guess that's supposed to be Makers. Chicago, Illinois, Stradivarius it says. And it's got Anno, looks like 19... Maybe 22 or something like that. I can't tell. Then there's a model, and it's the label's tour right where the model number is. I can't really honestly make it out. It's very dusty inside. Something else I'm real curious about, I don't know what it is, other than just dust, but you can just see it piled up here on this, on this bridge, and it just flakes off. It's not. It doesn't look like dust exactly. It looks... I don't know exactly what it is. It's, 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 it's a combination of sand, lint, and dust. That's what it looks like. It's pretty heavy and pretty thick and it's falling all over the place here. So I think we're going to take a vacuum to this thing before we do anything, inside and out, and clean it up and then I'll get back to you. Alright, I've got it wedged open just a little bit so that I can get glue into this crack and it's a pretty big crack so it's not going to be too hard to get glue down in there. I am going to put it in there fairly liberally.
that's got the crack sealed pretty good all along there with this bar clamp. I have a wedge and a post underneath here pushing this broken piece up to get it level. I also put this wedge in from underneath to help force the piece up. And that seems to be working pretty well. We're going to call that good and let that set for a couple hours. I just want to make a, a point that hopefully it'll be understandable. The strings were up to full tension when they brought this to me. Full tension. I mean, it was tuned, basically. This crack was there already, of course, and yet the crack was closed. Uh, in other words, it wasn't trying to separate, it wasn't being pushed apart because of the string tension. So the string tension is not putting any stress on that particular crack. There is no actual tension on that crack, so I've got it glued really well with tight bond. That glue is stronger than the wood. There will be no reason to cleat that. If you cleated it, it's just a waste of time. It's not going to break there. It'll break at another grain line before it breaks at that tight bond glue joint. So I'm not worried about that joint at all. Now, if there was stress pulling it apart laterally or pushing, you know, pushing against it somewhere, then yeah, I might cleat it. But no, that's not the issue. So I'm not worried about that joint at all. I'm going to cut all this gook off of here, whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. I would say it's wood filler is what it looks like. My collar and it shows on my Sunday clothes. I'll do my best with the soap and the water, but the damned old dirt won't go. But when I pass through the it'll glue up okay. I don't know how to fix that real easily. It's not level, it's not square, there's nothing good about any of that. Once again I thought I had the camera on but I cut out that little strip that was still stuck to the sides and glued it back in here. I just used super glue to do that because it just would take too long any other way. And now I'm just gonna Scrape that a little bit smooth, or maybe sand it smooth in that general area right there. Start here. I gotta, I gotta get glue under here. And I'm gonna clean this out with this. I can see the crack goes way back in there. Just gonna take the back edge of this and knock it down on both surfaces. Rubbing against the top, rubbing against the sides, so that we can clean off any lumps or any junk, clean it as we can get it. Tight bond obviously bonds better to wood than it does to all this other junk, but it'll bond to the other junk too. I'm gonna get me some clamps and get ready to clamp this down. Got the base on its edge, obviously, and I'm gonna squirt this glue, use the uh, nozzle again like a syringe and force it down in there. And of course, as always, take my brush and push it down in there. Years ago, I made these base clamps for just such things. I don't I should have wing nuts on them it'd be a lot easier but it you know you don't really need wing nuts on this kind of thing this works just fine and you can turn it tight enough uh, with your fingers to make it plenty tight but when I pass through the pearly gates 
Will my gown be gold instead? Or just a red clay robe with red clay wings and a red clay halo for my head? Okay, so now we'll move around to this other edge that need that's loose and we'll get it clamped up. We got the same issue with this crack right here, and uh, once again, I'll just take a wedge, put it in there a little bit, hold the crack open a little bit, um, just take my exacto knife, scrape it against the top up there a little bit, in case there's anything. This, these cracks appear to be really clean, these ones that I'm doing like this. I don't see much in them either. <sighs> okay, so we just need to put glue in there and clamp that down. Okay, this one here is a race to the finish. We're going to put glue all over everything and uh, get her put back together. Gold instead, or just a red clay rope with red clay wings and a red clay halo for my head. I'll take a red clay rope with red clay wings and a red clay Man, that, that crack almost disappeared. If it wasn't for a few little chip outs of finish, I would say it has disappeared. We'll just let that set now for several hours, and uh, matter of fact, we'll let it set overnight, and tomorrow it ought to be as good as new. Taking all the clamps off, it's just perfect. I, I really couldn't be happier with how well it glued up, and uh, it's just perfect. You can't really even feel the crack, it's just as good as it could have ever happened. Um, so I'm real tickled with that. Um, I'm sure the customer will be happy with it. You can almost not see it at all. Uh, you know, you have to get down and look pretty close to see. There's a crack all the way down through here and a crack all the way down through here. Uh, this one you wouldn't see at all if it hadn't for the finish chipping off. I'm, I'm tempted to touch, try to touch it up just a little tiny bit, but boy, you can you can screw things up pretty fast with finish so I don't know if I should just leave well enough alone because it's pretty darn good it matches the rest of the instruments you really can't tell that anything specifically happened there now I will tell you something I've noticed that bothers me but I don't think I'm gonna mess with it I think they've got this bridge glued in place because I tried to move it and it doesn't move it's solid as a brick I think I'm going to leave well enough alone, tune it up, and call it a finished product. Because, uh, you know, sometimes you get into a can of worms that you wish you wouldn't have opened. And I can just tell by the way a lot of things have happened on this instrument, this would be one of those instruments that I just don't think I want to get into that. So, we'll tune her up and let you see what it sounds like. Well, it's all tuned up and working just fine. Here's a shot of the front of it there. This side is the side that was all broken. And uh, let's move it up a little closer up on the 
There's a close-up of the part that were broken. You can barely tell it. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It, you know, I think what I'll do instead of trying to touch up the finish, I think I'll just touch that with some uh, linseed oil, and that'll uh, darken that crack just enough to make it blend in, and uh, it won't hurt anything either. And that'll, I think that'll make it just perfect. Here's uh, what it sounds like, and I can't really play a bass, so I'm just do some very basic <laughs> chords. sounds very muted. Um, that's my opinion on it. I don't know exactly why, probably because the sound post is pretty far back here. Uh, it's pretty far down here, which everybody's got a different opinion on that stuff. The bridge may not be just right either, but uh, that's not my charge. My charge was just to fix it. That's all that the, their insurance claim was covering, so that's all I can do. And uh, anyway, it's a pretty nice old bass. Uh, if I think in the right hands, this could really be a real nice bass. Just thought I'd add a little side note about the uh, repair on this bass. The customer was very concerned that it was going to cost up you know, upwards of $1,000 or more to repair it. And of course, I hadn't seen it at the time. I said, well, most repairs only take me a couple of hours like that. I mean, they did send me a picture, so I did have at least a, a visual. I said, most repairs that look like that, roughly a couple hours work, so about $120. She goes, oh, I can't believe that. And I said, well, that's about what it will cost probably. I said, it might be a little more, it might be a little less. Well, it turned out I had just almost exactly 100 hours in it, so I just rounded it off to $100 even. I don't normally tell you what I charge and, and uh, you know for things like this, but uh, you know I you already know that I am basically get $60 an hour, which is a dollar a minute, and I feel like that's a fair rate. If I'm making that kind of money, I'm doing fine, and I don't really feel like I need to get rich off of this stuff. So anyway, I just thought I'd pass that along for what it's worth. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick fix there on this base. Uh, I think it turned out really well, considering uh, how badly it was busted. Thanks for watching.